By 1954, Rabva was a town of 45,000 people. In the center of the town, gleaming in white brilliance, stood the elegant Mubarak Mosque. In March 1954, a young boy, about 19 years of age, he attacked Hazrat Khalifa al Masih when he finished his leading his Asr prayer in Masjid Mubarak and he uh, stabbed him on his neck and the knife entered, the blade entered deep in the body. Though the wound itself was to heal rapidly, it had a serious effect on his nervous system. His health deteriorated and he was unable to work his usual long hours. Some two years later, he went to seek advice from specialists in London. Quite a few members of uh, Uzur's uh, family uh, accompanied him. Huzur, among Uzur's children was uh, Hazrat Mirza Munawar Ahmad Sahib, Dr. Mirza Munawar Ahmad Sahib, uh, Mirza Mubarak Ahmad Sahib, then Mirza Tahir Ahmad Sahib. After the treatment, Hazrat Khalifa Tulmasi II decided to return to Rabwa, but he left Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmad, now aged 26, behind in London. Although according to the original plans he was due to return with his father, but his father had other plans for him. In London, he lived in Maida Vale and studied at the University of London. Although he had learnt English at school, it was at the London University where he learned how to express himself better in the language. Whilst in London, he also had the opportunity to travel in Europe and meet a range of people. About his experience in London, he states in his biography, at the School of Oriental Studies, I had met people from all over the world, from Africa, from Germany and Poland, from all parts of Europe, really, and from America and Canada and South America. I believe that was important, that God had decided that was what I should do, even though I did not know it at the time. He had decided that I should meet all these people and that I should go out and travel in Europe. I think that was his design. He returned to Rabva in October 1957 and got married in December that year to Hazrat Saida Asifa Begum. That very same year, Hazrat Khalifa Tulmasi II appointed him at the office of Vakfa Jadid, which looked after the needs of Ahmadis living in rural communities in east and west Pakistan. His new post in the Vakfa Jadid put him in direct contact with the small farmers, villagers and shopkeepers, who were one of the great strengths of the community. He was always very caring for the poor and the needy, and this was also apparent in his personal life. तो उम्मी का कहा उम्मी मैं वैसे दो में नमीना बजा रहे हमारे स्कूल का तो उम्मी के ने भी दिया नहीं थे या काम दे रही थी जो भी था तो बाने सुन लिया बाकी इतने के मैं देता हूँ तो दस दस रुपए दिए थे तो कुछ दस रुपए बहुत ज़्यादा लगते थे तो क्या था लेकिन एक शर्त है कि तुम लोगों ने साथ अपने साथ किसी गरीब बच्चों को भी साथ कुछ खराब फलाओगी और ये करोगी तो शुरू से इतना मतलब ये था कि हर चीज में तुम लोगों ने उनका हिस्सा रखना है और मोहब्बत करनी है उनसे और इसी तरह बाहर घर में मुलाद में इनके साथ भी बहुत ज़्यादा उतने से लोग थे रखते रहते थे कि यहाँ तक कि एक दफा मुझे याद है उम्मी को कह रहे थे कि लोगों को तो मुलाद में रखने की मुसीबत होती है कि आते नहीं हैं हमारे हमें निकालने की मुश्किल पड़ जाती है उनके ऊपर जाते नहीं हैं इतने अच्छी तरह रहते थे कि वो जाने पे भी नहीं राजी होते थे वे। There was a special bond between him and people. I don't understand how and why but it was a special bond whoever used to uh, be with him once he used to get uh, hooked to him wherever he worked he worked uh, very hard and he always worked and showed his example but he used to work in the land as he was he is a peasant 
so to show them that he can do what whatever he asks them to do he can do himself also so he was a great leader and uh, very active and eloquent and uh, you know he was a good speaker he could speak for hours on different topics later he started question answer also with nona mudis aza khalifa salif jab log aaya karte the gair jamaat maulvi wagaira bhi aate the to aza khalifa salif zyada tar abba ke koi kehte the ke aap inse majlis karenge he led a very disciplined life serving the cause of the community he used to start his day very early in the morning and was at his office well before anyone else abba ka ek to main aapko bataun ki ye to ek tarika tha na subah namaz ke baad tahajjud aur namaz ke baad abba tilawat karte the ye to mujhe jab se maine hosh sambhala ye maine dekh ke uske baad phir abba thodi der ke liye sote zarur the फिर अब बा चले जाते थे अपने वक्फ जदीद के दफ्तर तो दोपहर को आते थे ढाई दर तीन साढ़े तीन के दरमियान और उस वक्त उनके मुलाजमीन भी अपने क्वार्टर में जा चुके होते थे कि भी अबा ने किसी को नहीं कहा कि मुझे खाना निकाल के दो या गर्म करके दो खाना पड़ा होता था और खुद ही निकाल के बैठ जाते थे हम लोग तो बच्चे थे तो मुझे याद है कि ऊपर के थोड़ा तो मेज़ों पे भी चढ़ के बैठ जाते थे अब्बा के साथ बातें हैं बेतकल्फी बात थी तो इसलिए सारी बातें करते रहते थे सवाल जवाब और अब्बा बड़ी खुशी खुशी से हर बात का जवाब भी दे रहे हैं और साथ साथ खाना भी खा रहे हैं इतना मोहब्बत का जो लोग बंदा हुआ था कि अब्बा की नाराज़गी सबसे बड़ी सजा लगती थी इसलिए ये होता था कि अगर जहाँ ये देखते थे कि अब्बा को किसी बात से तकलीफ़ हो रही है तो हमारे लिए सख्त तकलीफ तो शर्म वाली बात बन जाती थी तरबी तरबियत का मुझे जो सबसे अब्बा का अंदाज़ा अच्छा लगा कि बच्चों से या किसी से भी ऐसी मोहब्बत का सलूक बांध लेते थे कि उसकी वजह से इंसान बहुत सी बातों से बच जाता है It is one of the ironies of history that the Ahmadiyya movement which was instrumental in the creation of Pakistan was persecuted by the so-called religious scholars or ulama who had been so violently opposed to its creation. The persecution was politically inspired to divert the attention of the population from real problems that the country was facing. 1953 saw some of the worst rioting against Ahmadi Muslims and the community. There was uh, a generalized riot in the punjab mm-hmm. it was uh, supported by the punjab government quietly not officially mm-hmm. so it became out of control get went out of control and ultimately march the first martial law was imposed because of this this wave of persecution continued for nearly 20 years both at institutional and grassroots level what you observe today in pakistan is not just uh, a public wrath turned against ahmadis yeah. it is the government government legal persecution it is the state persecution yes, yes. in 1965 hazrat halifa tulmasi ii passed away hazrat mirza nasir ahmad the son of halifa tulmasi ii and the elder brother of hazrat mirza tahir ahmad was chosen as the third khalifa the problems for the community continued in pakistan Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmad worked under the guidance of the third khalifa to deal with the problems the community was facing. In 1974, legislation was proposed in the National Assembly of Pakistan declaring that Ahmadis were not Muslims. Hazrat Khalifa Tulmasi III led a five-man delegation to the National Assembly which discussed the proposed legislation. Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmad was the youngest member of the delegation. a complement to his knowledge sagacity and familiarity with the history and traditions of the community in 1974 pakistan's national assembly declared that ahmadis were not muslims in 1974 bhutto committed the mistake of interfering with a religious process for which he was not politically entitled you see yeah and that opened the pandora's box after yeah. that nobody could be able to close it Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmad continued to serve the community with great zeal. From 1979 to 1982, he served as the president of Majlis-e-Ansarullah. 
He also served as director of Fazleoma Foundation and patron of the International Ahmadiyya Association of Architects and Engineers.